Welcome to our review on other ways to use energy from the sun. So what we can also do with the sun's energy is we can use it in this thing called passive solar heating. Now what passive solar heating is, is basically where we've designed the building to utilize the heat from the sun without us having to do anything. So what we're actually going to have here are very large windows on the south side of the building because that means that the light energy is going to pass through the windows, it gets absorbed by surfaces inside the building which heats them up. They will then re-radiate that heat energy and therefore warm up that building. This picture here then just shows us how it works. So as we can see we've got the glass on the south side and in this instance we've got it not only on the wall but also on the roof. So this would be kind of like your conservatory if you like. So the radiation from the sun passes through the glass and is absorbed by those inner surfaces, the brick surfaces. As they're absorbed it heats them up and then because we've got a hot object those surfaces will emit longer wavelength infrared radiation. That's then obviously going to be released into the room. If it hits the glass, it gets reflected back into the room, and that means that we're going to heat up the space in there. Our next use of the sun's energy is in a solar stove. So we've got the picture down there showing you the solar stove, and what we actually have is a big curved mirror. So the whole idea behind that curved mirror is to focus the light energy into one place as it's reflected. So because we've got that curved surface, it's going to reflect those rays of the energy directly onto that central point, which is where our pan is. So because it's the focal point, it receives a lot of energy and gets very hot as a result of that. So we can then cook things. Our third use then is the solar thermal tower. So we've got the picture there showing us one of these solar thermal towers and what we actually have at the bottom are a large number of mirrors. Now what those mirrors actually do is they're going to reflect light from the sun into one spot at the top of that tower as you can see from that glowing spot basically. Now because we're reflecting all of that energy from those mirrors onto that one spot on the tower it gets really hot. Okay, We're talking about like 500 degrees Celsius here. Now, because it's getting to that very high temperature, we can use that energy to heat water into steam. One thing to bear in mind is that throughout the day, the sun is in a different position in the sky. So for these different items to actually work at their highest efficiency, then what we actually need to do is have our mirrors or our solar collectors with motors so that they can actually track the position of the sun during the day and keep reflecting light energy onto the same place. So do remember that we can motorize the mirrors in order for them to track the position of the sun to maintain that maximum light energy reaching the same place on whatever device we're talking about. The last way we can generate energy from using the sun is through the use of energy from the wind. Now I know what you're thinking, how on earth does this come from the sun? But the reality is that the reason we have wind is because they are convection currents which have been set up in the earth's atmosphere by energy from the sun. So what we end up with is the kinetic energy of our wind driving the wind turbines and that generates the electrical energy. So I've given you a picture of wind turbines there just in case you haven't seen them. But again we need to consider the advantages and the disadvantages of them. So the advantages first of all, again this is another renewable source of energy which means it's not going to run out and they don't produce waste. All that happens is kinetic energy gets changed into the electrical energy. We're not burning anything, we're not generating carbon dioxide. There are some disadvantages as well, however. As you can see from the picture there, they're not the smallest of things in the world, and therefore some people believe that they actually spoil the landscape. We obviously have to have a high enough wind speed for the actual blades to be turning, but we can't have it too high, otherwise they become unsafe. So the wind speed's got to be just right. We can't obviously build them in certain areas, because if it's a sheltered area, then the wind isn't going to reach them, therefore they're not going to turn the blades and therefore won't generate the electricity. And we need quite a large area to actually house enough of those turbines to generate the same amount of energy as a power station. So this is why a lot of these wind farms are now being put out at sea and so on. Because they're not right on someone's doorstep, so they're not ruining the actual landscape, etc. But you get a good wind speed out at sea because it's not sheltered by anything else.